section 80 by sampayana said then kavya the foremost of bhrigu's line became angry himself and approaching rishaparvan where the latter was seated began to address him without weighing his words okay he said sinful acts do not like the earth bear fruit immediately but gradually and secretly do they extirpate their do- doers such fruit visit either in one's own self one's son or one's grandson <clears throat> sins must bear their fruit like rich food they can never be digested and because he slew the brahmana kacha the grandson of angiras who was virtuous acquainted with the precepts of religion and attentive to his duties while residing in my abha abode even for this act of the slaughter unfit as he was for it and for the maltreatment of my daughter too no orishwaparvan i shall leave thi and thy relatives indeed working for this i can no longer stay with thi those thou o asura chief think that i am a raving liar thou makes little of thy de- offense without seeking to correct it vishwaparvan then said O son of Bhrigu, never have I attributed want of virtue or falsehood to thee. Indeed, virtue and truth ever dwell in thee. Be graceful unto me, O Bhargava. If leaving us, thou really ghost ends, we shall then go into the depths of the ocean. Indeed, there is nothing else for us to do. Sukra then replied, Ye Asuras, whether it is, I go into the depths of the ocean or fly away into all directions I care little I am unable to bear my daughter's grief my daughter is even dear to me my life depends on her seek ye to please her as rishaspati ever seek the good of indra so do i always seek thine by my ascetic merits rishaparvan then said o bhargava thou art the absolute master of whatever is possessed by the asura chiefs in this world their elephants kain and horses and even my humble self sukra then answered if it is true o great asuras that i am the lord of all the wealth of the asuras then go and gratify devayani by some payana continue when the great kavya was so addressed by rishaparvan He then went to Devayani and told her how. Devayani, however, quickly replied, O Bhargava, if thou art truly the lord of the Asura king himself, and of all his wealth, then let the king himself come to me and say so in my presence. Vishwaparvan then approached, Vishwaparvan then approached Devayani and told her, O Devayani, of sweet smiles, whatever thou desires i am willing to give thee however difficult it may to be to grant the same devayani answered i desire sarmista with a thousand maids to wait on me she must also follow me to where my father may give me away rishaparvan then commanded a maid servant in attendance on him saying go and quickly bring sarmista hither let her also accomplish what devayani wishes Vaishampayana continued, the maid servant then repaired to Sarmista and told her, O amiable Sarmista, rise and follow me. Accomplish the good of thy relatives, urged by Devayani, the Brahmana, Sukra, he is on the point of leaving his disciples, the Asuras, O sinless one, thou must do what Devayani wished. Sarmista replied, I shall cheerfully do what Devayani wished, urged by the Devayani. Sukra is calling me. Both Sukra and Devayani must not leave the Asuras through my fault. Vaisampayana continued, commanded by her father. Then Sarmista, accompanied by a thousand maidens, soon came in a palanquin out of her father's excellent mansion. And approaching Devayani, she said, with my thousand maids i am thy waiting maid and i shall follow thee where thy father may give thee away devayani replied 
I am the daughter of one who chanted the praises of thy father and who begged and accept alms. Thou, on the other hand, art the daughter of one who is adored. How canst thou be my waiting maid? Sarvishta answered, One must by all means contribute to the happiness of one's afflicted relatives. Therefore shall I follow thee, wherever thy father may give thee away. Vaishampayana continued. When Sarmishta had thus promised to be Devayani's waiting maid, the latter, O king, then spoke on to her. Father, thus, O best of all excellent Brahmanas, I am gratified. I shall now enter the Asura capital. I now know that thy science and power of knowledge are not futile. Vaisampayana continued, that best of Brahmanas, of great reputation, thus addressed by his daughter, then entered the Asura capital in the gladness of heart, and the Dhanavas worshipped him with great reverence. Thus ends the 80th section in the Sambhava Parva of the Adi Parva.